bring a lot of little air here, so let's get speed up a little bit. Hi, y'all. Welcome back to another Four Ways Collaboration uh, video. Uh, I was the one that suggested the project uh, this uh, for this month, and it's a disc uh, vase. Uh, I got excited about doing one of these, but uh, it's been on my to-do list for several years, uh, based on an article by Dennis Belcher and American Woodturner uh, several several years ago. Uh, you can either put it with a uh, little uh, glass test tube type uh, uh, insert in it for uh, bud vases, or leave it in or out with for uh, dried flowers. I hope y'all will check. You'll check out the other links I've got in the uh, show notes to the other four way collab videos because I'm curious to see how they did this multi axis uh, project. So I cut a plank of red oak. Uh, it was green, about two inches thick, about six and three quarter inches across. I marked centers uh, on both ends and marked the area for the tenon. So I've got it mounted between centers and now I'm going to turn a tenon on one end in grain running this way. Using a three eighths inch uh, bowl gap. one and a quarter inch from the end for the opening of the mouth. And I do that on both sides. I should have laid out this cir circle earlier, but uh, I'm using a bowl template. And I'm trying to get a feel for whether my test tube is going to fit. Okay. There's various test tube sides available. Uh, I'm going to have this cut out, this mouth cut out, around here. It looks something like this. So the test tube's going to fit down near the bottom. I've still got to have room at the end here for the flat area that gets cut off so this will stay flat. So this is going to be cutting it close. The drill bit is long enough uh, to drill a hole for this uh, bud vase, but only after I hollow it out. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start uh, drilling now to make it a little easier to scoop out the mouth, and I'll come back and finish drilling when I can get the, the uh, drill bit further down in here. Cutting, cutting this this out. I think I want to initially using a three eighths inch bowl gouge and start. Uh, uh, matter of fact, I think I'm going to use a half inch spindle gouge and treat this like a uh, hollowing out a box. So using a half inch spindle gouge, I'm going to cut from the outside, inside out. I need to raise tool rest just a little bit.
this and maybe look at the depth of this hole. Right there. Got another quarter inch or so to go, and I've got to bring it out another quarter inch, so it's okay. about where I want it to actually be. My test tube has got this flange on it, so I need to put a slight recess. That's the deep as it's drill. I'll have to drill it deeper as well. Um, so I think I'm going to take a, a box scraper and just open that up just a little bit. So the drill bit is just long enough for the test tube if I go all the way down in there. hole just a little bit deeper now it fits perfectly with uh, with that flange with uh, very little bud base showing. I can get this profile got a little bit of a hump here so I'm going to take that out with a, a scraper. tenon was only needed to open this up and drill this hole so as I turn this round I'll cut off the tenon and I'll just uh, rough, rough cut this round. Now, I'm mounting this against my vacuum chuck. There's different ways to hold this but uh, this is the way that that I'm going to uh, I'm going to use, but I'm not getting much of a vacuum. I might have a problem. I've got a I've got a different idea, but I'm going to start start with this. Smooth this side off so I think it'll seat better on the vacuum chuck. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get it round. Let's do that. Then I got to come in from the other side. Turn on back and jerk, see if it gives it any additional hold. A little bit. Oh, 
Okay, nice and round. Now I need to uh, draw a line right down the center and one line adjacent to the hole on each side. So we're going to just eyeball that. Now we're just going to go to each side of that. Alright, I've drawn a line here uh, it, it, that'll make a tenon for the largest jaws I've got. My goal is to uh, be able to uh, put a tenon on here, reverse it, and clean up the other side well enough that the vacuum chuck will hold it securely. Let's see if that works. Not on chuck. All right, these five-inch jaws are the largest ones Record Power makes, so this will just fit. I could use the uh, cold jaws or mega jumbo jaws with the little buttons, but I find them very fussy. So now I'm just going to clean up this surface. This surface is more uneven than the other one. sides to see if the center just coming Get back here just a little bit more. Well since I've got this smoothed over this side in the chuck I'm going to go ahead and start shaping this side without having to worry about a vacuum chuck. Just with a pull cut, I'm going to start trying to bring this shape around. Outside the edge of the hole. Let's speed up a bit. to bring it around. Okay, it looks pretty good. Fairly fairly clean for green wood. It'll, it'll sand out. Uh, now I think I'm ready to Turn it around on the other side of the vacuum chuck, see if I can get the same effect.
much better vacuum. I sanded the flat base smooth on my belt sander. You can decorate yours with dye or inlay or texture, carving or pyrography. Since my blank came from a tree that was standing green uh, about three weeks ago, I ran it through the uh, microwave in, in the kitchen when my wife wasn't around uh, a few times. I put a coat of pre-mixed alcohol-based black dye and then sanded it back some with 240 grit. I then added a coat of red dye and sanded it lightly with 400 grit. And then I added a bit of yellow dye on the light areas and after a few minutes of drying I sprayed it with a few light coats of acrylic gloss finish. I'm interested in seeing how the other, other fellas did with their, their discs. Be sure to uh, click on the, on the links that are in the show notes and catch their version. Y'all stay safe. Come on back. You hear?